Thank you for joining us on Business News. President Bola Tinubu rang the closing bell at the Nasdaq stock market in New York as he called on the United States business community to reinvest in Nigeria's bubbling market. This was part of proceedings of the executive business dialogue organized by the United States Chamber of Commerce, Nigerian Exchange Group PLC and Nigerian Investment Promotion Council. The president, who is attending the ongoing 78th section of the United Nations General Assembly, was accompanied to the bell ceremony by the president of the U.S. Africa Business Center, Mr. Scott Eisner, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. I am happy to bring Nigeria to your doorsteps and uh, honored that we are here today with a bubbling market that we evolve West Africa subregion. The greatest economy is Nigeria. There's an immense opportunity in Nigeria that you can invest your money without fear. We've removed a lot of bottlenecks. We've, uh, clear the oil subsidy that is corrupt and we have also re, you know retooled the exchange rate to a reliable dependable one figure floating of the exchange naira. you are free to take in your money and bring out your money i count on you to invest in nigeria President Tinubu at the Nasdaq Stock Exchange there. Away from there now, Central Bank of Nigeria has unveiled a new online platform named CBN Licensing Approval and Other Request Porter, known as CBN Lab, for the submission of microfinance bank license applications. This was disclosed in a statement signed by the Director of Corporate Communications, Isa Abdumomin, on the APS Bank website. Mr. Abud Momin said that this platform will replace the current manual process, allowing prospective microfinance license applicants to submit their applications physically. The Director of Corporate Communications said, adding that this digitized application will simplify processes, improve accessibility, reduce paperwork, and expedite license approvals, benefiting both applicants and the economy. He also revealed that the platform is expected to be extended to other categories of licenses in due course. And in the meantime, the United Nations Habitat Ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Raymond Edo, is worried about the gross implications of smuggling to the Nigerian economy. He is therefore seeking the support of the Nigerian customs in the fight against the menace through the deployment of effective measures. Lara Fulano reports. The country's borders has had gross economic implications over the years as the sabotage policies aimed at boosting capacities of the productive sector. <laughs> this trend is of grave concern to the United Nations Habitat Ambassadors in Nigeria, who feels result-oriented measures should be taken to address this menace. The ambassador, who is interested in leveraging the power of young people by way of awareness creation towards changing this narrative, now also seeks the support of the customs in actualizing these objectives. We are on our knees as a nation because of illegal arms that find their ways into this country. We are begging all over the world to help us. Why? Because of illegal arms. To check travelers and other baggages, cargo and mail access, and collect custom duties and other tax on goods and services. The desire is to see all stakeholders involved in stopping smuggling activities in the country, particularly in areas of border controls, improved customs surveillance efforts, legal frameworks, international cooperation, and public awareness, amongst others. The Customs Service agrees that the situation needs to be urgently tackled. It is willing to join efforts with the UN Habitat Ambassador in this important quest 
to address smuggling. The relevant departments within the customs would be willing, uh, will allow them to work out the details of these beautiful plans that you have, uh, either in terms of the travels to the 36 states. Uh, I would like you to have FCT uh, so that they will fully understand uh, the evils of smuggling. If you observe very well today, we have a lot of loopholes when it comes to uh, collection of uh, duties. But I know and I believe, I'm confident in him today that we will correct this under the present administration. Smuggling into any nation's economy comes with really grave implications, including undermining legitimate trade, cutting down on revenue from import duties and taxes, creating unfair competition for local manufacturers, distorting markets, as well as causing price fluctuations amid several shortcomings. Lara Polayo, CVC News. And our Asian stocks followed Wall Street's lead today, dipping across the board as investors interpreted the U.S. Federal Reserve's latest policy statement as signaling higher for longer interest rate. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was down 0.4%. Japan's Nikkei slid 0.6%, China's blue chip dipped 0.6%, while Hong Kong's benchmark shed 1.3%. Major stock futures wavered with the U.S. stock futures. The S&P 500 were down 0.3%. The part region euro stocks 50 futures, German DAX futures and FTSE futures all fell by roughly 1%. The U.S. Central Bank left interest rates unchanged yesterday in line with market expectations. Policymakers reinforced their hawkish stance with a further rate increase projected by the end of the year. A monetary policy forecast uh, kept significantly tighter through 2024 than previously expected. According to experts, the Federal Reserve's plans for a prolonged period of elevated interest rate could continue pressuring stocks and bonds in coming months. Though some investors doubt the central bank will stick to its decisions a little longer. Analysts say higher rates for longer could be an unwelcome turn of event for stocks and bonds. They said futures tied to the Fed's policy rate Wednesday's low that traders or show that traders were buffeting or betting the central bank will ease monetary policy by a total of nearly 60 basis points next year, bringing interest rate about 4.8% when compared to the 5.1% the Fed pensued into its updated quarterly projections. Meanwhile, the Bank of England will announce today whether it is halting a run of interest rate hikes that stretches back to December 2021, a day after signs that it had turned a corner in tackling Britain's high inflation problem. Investors get into debt. Uh, on the Bank of England, keeping bank rate at 5.25% yesterday as soon as official data showed a surprise fall in the pace of price growth. A 6.7% in August, inflation is falling towards the 5% level that the Bank of England predict for the coming month and which British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has promised to voters ahead of an election expected next year. The Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and his colleagues at yesterday's Monetary Policy Committee meeting have faced intense criticism after consumer price inflation surpassed 11% in October last year. Away from the now, unions at Apple stores in France have called for a strike on Friday and Saturday when the iPhone 15 is due to be launched, demanding better pay and working conditions. Apple unions have asked for a 7% wage increase to compensate for inflation and an end to a month-long hiring freeze. The union officials say the management did not want to offer more than a 4.5% hike, while representative of Apple France corporate division and Apple's Barcelona team in Spain also have called for a strike. Last week, Apple was rocked by a French government decision to suspend sales of iPhone 12 handset after tests which it said found breaches of radiation Exposure limit. A crude oil prices fell today after posting the largest decline in a month in the previous session. 
as U.S. interest rate hike expectations offset the impact of drawdowns in U.S. crude stockpiles. U.S. Forex Texas Intermediate Crude fell today to sell at $80.49 per barrel with a downward price margin of 1.3%. Brent crude futures also experienced a downward price reveal of 1.26% to settle at $92.35 per barrel. Born in Light recorded a price decline of 1.55% to sell at $96.0.5% per barrel. Uh, for the OPEC basket now, crude oil dealers offered $97 per barrel with an uptick of 0.07%. Well, and that does it for business of Nexus Sport Wrap.